So Benedict, welcome. You're, uh, you're the, the co-founder of, uh, of Helpling. We're here in Amsterdam at the Reshaping Work uh, Conference. You just gave, gave a talk and also did uh, uh, a, a Q&A with, uh, with some gig workers. Interesting discussions. <laughs> Very much. Uh, so you're the founder of Helpling, um, or co-founder of Helpling. Uh, for people who don't, who don't know what Helpling is, uh, can you tell us a short introduction? Yes, absolutely. So Helpling is a marketplace that connects private households uh, with vetted and insured service providers. So instead of going through lots of classifieds, asking your friends um, about who can basically come to your home and clean, for example, um, you can just go to our platform and within three seconds we provide um, a vetted and insured service provider to, to you. And we also make sure that throughout the entire process our platform supports like both the customer and also the service provider because in the end we can only like get great customer satisfaction if we have the right offering and the right platform especially for the best service providers in the market. And where does the idea came from? Um, so um, on the one hand like we saw a macro trend that services were not really online but about to go online because um, that's what we have seen across every kind of product category from laptops to like with Zalando in uh, 2009 shoes going online shoes that you have to try on very difficult uh, people could not really think that this would actually happen but it did and we believe that um, really now services are, are, are ripe and um, they were if you look at how you could previously find services on the internet, um, pretty much uh, like the old Yellow Pages world where you have an ad um, uh, online and you still have to go through the entire process. And like what we did at Helpling is that we built technology to make that experience really smooth from the vetting process, the booking, scheduling, um, but also the management of the relationship um, of two people that we put together to work with each other. Um, so it feels really like taking the on-demand um, economy technology experience experience to um, a world of services and basically helping is the, the platform for the ecosystem, everything around the household. So now we started in cleaning uh, because that was also for us personally, you asked how did we come up with it, like the, the, the big application for it, super difficult to find a trustworthy and like um, uh, uh, um, qualified person uh, that you want to work with. Um, so that was our basically entrance to the world of home services because that's a clear vertical. Um, and now with like 90% of our business being weekly or bi-weekly relationships um, of like, cleaners and customers on our platform, we added additional services to it. So we really follow through with the original um, vision to build the ecosystem for the household. And with Unilever um, um, brand SIF in the UK, we did a first um, prototype to now include also products to that offering. So we really try to comprise that entire offering. Yeah, so that's also an interesting shift in your in your business model and your value proposition. Uh, Helpling is, is also part of the Rocket Internet uh, group, or how do you uh, pronounce? Uh, can you tell me also something more about how these kind of platforms then can really make a really speed uh, by uh, or under the wings of the Rocket Internet group? So we started uh, building Helpling at the time together with Rocket, um, and now have also like a large variety of uh, some of the greatest VCs that are doing business in Europe, which makes us uh, very very proud. And um, this is also basically the consequence of that really perfect setup that we had initially um, uh, working together with Rocket Internet, where we could uh, get a team of uh, developers uh, right from day one, so we could uh, like build and launch the platform within 80 days from. Like, saying okay let's do that um, to, to launch in, in, uh, in Germany um, so that definitely was a super important and, uh, and, and, and uh, high value asset that we had in the beginning now obviously um, uh, the goal is to build very very quickly the, the structure and the resource that you have a, like an independent company that uh, can, can exist and, and uh, um, uh, grow and be successful uh, on its own but um, the relationship with Rocket is um, obviously still helpful when it comes to um, talking to specific experts or where we have um, other Rocket businesses being um, uh, uh, um, present in some of the markets where we do business. So the network is, 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 is very, very uh, helpful indeed. Yeah, I can imagine, yes, because so it, it really helps you to accelerate your growth. So you, uh, like you also say, in 80 days. Is there also kind of a program for these 80 days uh, that all the uh, new initiatives uh, go through? 
So um, uh, I can only talk about um, happening and, and the process we, we did it. So for us, it was the right process to launch very aggressively and very quickly, um, regardless of who we would do that with, right? So Rocket is a perfect partner to do that with, but um, that um, was not only driven by the setup, but it was also set, uh, um, driven by the um, tremendous competition that we had in this initial market. And it's a um, super attractive market, but it's also important to reach a certain scale because you're a marketplace. So um, this uh, initial fast, fast growth was important. And also um, uh, um, going out for uh, um, markets outside Germany, um, we expanded very rapidly within the first year and a half um, to several um, other European countries. Um, uh, to really be the first mover in those markets and like make helping like the first thing people associate with like, getting home services online today like more people in Germany search for helping online than cleaner so that's um, kind of proof of the like the household brand that we are trying to to build here there's still a long way to go but uh, we are that's the, the, um, the uh, purpose behind it so it's a really good job also by your, by your branding and marketing team. <clears throat> Congrats on that. And how did you grow? Because uh, you're a you now international platform, uh, but you, uh, you uh, facilitate local services. So you also need to find the right fit uh, local in demand and supply. So how did you grow the platform from start? And also how did it go when you also entered, entered the new countries? So um, we are in a very local market and we are a two-sided marketplace where um, we need to make sure that there's a certain balance between um, supply and demand, customers and service providers um, across the different markets. And by markets, I mean even a, an area of a city because um, that's where people um, actually then deliver the service. Uh, and uh, at the same time, it's a very people's driven business. So we are not sending around Amazon style packages, but we bring two people together to work with each other. So um, in terms of the market entry, we um, expanded uh, not only to uh, additional countries, but also within the countries to um, major cities. So um, it's certainly an urban business model um, where we focus on cities with a certain population. Um, but uh, then um, when you are building such a city, you need to make sure that on the one hand, you have an attractive offering for the supply side and for the demand side and figuring out, okay, what's the edge that we can create for the supply and the demand side across the different markets? Um, that's really what's driving the, also then the success of whether this is going well or not. Yeah, I think it's also a mistake uh, many people make about how scalable a platform is. That it's, it's, it's quite some work to get enough people on board in every city. So it's not just put your platform online and then wait, but it's really uh, hard work. Yes. And how, um, because uh, I think what differentiates you also with other more gig economy platforms is that uh, 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 the workers are really getting a relationship, uh, at the month supply, they are working together uh, 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 many times, like every week, mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to have a new cleaner every week, or yes. I wouldn't, know, <laughs> wouldn't have yeah, it. No one wants um, at what way do you then also on long term uh, uh, provide the, the, um, the added value to both sides uh, and then also prevent that they won't skip your platform and then they just go and start working uh, together? So um, for the customer, for example, what is very important is that uh, with this legal way of uh, working together with the service provider, they can very often benefit from tax benefits in Germany or France, for example. Um, for that, you would also need a proper invoice and um, uh, an online payment. And this is also something that the platform can facilitate, which also like not only when, the, when we put people together to work with each other, but in the long run, it's super helpful if you have an automatic uh, online payment, for example. There's a liability insurance. If anything goes wrong, you have a customer service you can call. Um, if the person you usually work with is not available because uh, of holidays, for example, then the platform can arrange an, uh, a replacement for that time. Um, so that's value that is not only created when people meet for the first time, but um, uh, we are striving to create value um, over the entire lifetime of that relationship. And that's basically the challenge that we have a, 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 as a business to really make sure that we have this edge over the long time and also um, very much driven by the service provider side, right? Because they are the customers who actually pay us, so we take a commission. Um, uh, here you need to uh, um, differentiate between like an introduction con commission and a commission over the course of the, the value, right? So a liability insurance is something, for example, that both parties benefit from. 
um, for um, the uh, provider. Um, uh, the most important thing is that they really are the own boss, right? So they can um, use a very, very flexible um, platform to manage everything. So they also like to tend to have more than one customer through the platform. Um, and this creates a certain lock-in because people are happy with how their business is going through the platform. But they do also have business outside of the platform, um, not with people they met through Helpling, but with existing customers they had before they joined our platform, for example. So, like, really we compete for, um, like, the time and the, the effort they spend using our platform and we are, um, like, very carefully measuring, um, like, all the effects that uh, um, certain features uh, etc I have so business intelligence is a very very and retention tracking analysis is a very important part of it so um, reduce all that friction um, and think of it um, uh, like for the customer for all of us it's very easy to understand why it makes sense yeah we want to have someone legal and short and good someone we can trust right? that's a, that's an easy sell right um, for us to imagine how you can add value to someone working in that uh, area of work um, who maybe wants to make 800 or 1500 euros um, uh, a month, that's a totally different question, right? That's something that not, doesn't come so natural. So we really talked um, to thousands of, of people and uh, we're doing this now for four years. So the value proposition is the right one across the, the entire value proposition. And if you have like five customers on the platform, you make the experience that one of them churns, you have another one exactly in the same uh, kind of area uh, and in the right uh, uh, time slot of your agenda, that really creates um, uh, a, 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 an enormous uh, value for people using the platform. Yeah. And you'll say uh, uh, things about taxes uh, in Germany and France, so you also talk quite a lot, I guess, with uh, authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also interesting about helping is that it's uh, in potentially solving a black market pro uh, problem. Uh, like in the Netherlands, I think it's potential because mm -hmm. in the end, the cleaner uh, can decide him, him or herself mm -hmm. if he will uh, yeah, uh, uh, tell the, uh, the, the, the tax uh, <laughs> government mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, if, if you have a work for helping or not. Uh, how is this uh, arranged in, 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 in Germany and France? So, um, in Germany, you have a 20% tax benefit from the government for uh, legal household services. Um, in, in France, um, the, this same uh, tax benefit is 50%, so substantially higher. Um, the effect on Germany is very low, actually. We still have 85% black market labor in a country where people do not cross the street at a red light at night. Right? Um, so France has only 40% uh, black market, which is kind of a frictional black market um, that you might probably always have. Uh, but it's half the size of, of Germany. And um, there are some like really areas where policy matters a lot. Um, uh, for self-employed people, for example, they have to pay uh, a VAT uh, rate of 20% in Germany um, at uh, a level of already 17,000 euros. In France, it's 33,000 euros, and then they only have to pay 10%. Right? So it's a very, very different um, uh, kind of setup, um, uh, leading to very different uh, results. And um, yes, uh, we do operate under different systems, and we see the effects uh, immediately. So in Germany, the large competition for us is truly the black market, right? So not for the customer side. For the customer side, this is easy, right? Um, but for the service provider side, for them to, like, they need to make a conscious decision not only to join Helpling, yeah, and that Helpling makes sense for them as a partner to work with customers, um, but they also need to make a conscious decision to, like, declare income and pay, um, uh, be part of the, the system. and. Um, unfortunately, incentives are not very, very favorable for the self-employment uh, uh, work form that this is a great attractive alternative to the black market. Yes. Right? So um, we know this from like the thousands of conversations we, we are doing and this is like our daily job. It's my job routine and our team's job routine um, to build an attractive offering to the supply side. Um, so this is really something that we think hard about and uh, like we see that the debate is starting really, um, as you can see, so strikingly different results under different policy regimes. Um, uh, and we hope that there's a lot of that coming out of Germany as well.
because I think also one of the challenges is, is, is that you maybe want to do more for your uh, workers, the cleaners, but you're not allowed by law. Uh, so, so if we could write the law again, yeah, so we can, we can say to like Netherlands, uh, to people, the Hague, okay, nice that you formed a new cabinet, finally, uh, but now we're going to change some things. Well, what's your wish list? So, um the easiest way to make um, uh, make that uh, question uh, um, like that reality is okay. What's the incentive for people to work legally versus the the, the black market, um, and to make that and to really or um, help the people who have made that decision, even though the conditions are not very favorable, right? Um, so, um, important part of that is access to social security. So. Um, uh, for self-employed, historically, that has been very complicated, not only in Germany, but as well in the Netherlands. So um, they pay, uh, especially at low incomes, uh, much higher uh, shares of their income for health insurance. They don't have access to pensions. Um, so this is um, uh, very, very um, much uh, the, the key to make this, this, this work more, more, um, more attractive, um, while at the same time, um, uh, you can ask why um, households, um, uh, how households can um, also uh, benefit from uh, these services more, right? So the one thing is increasing the supply by making it more attractive to work as a self-employed, but also then um, making the service more broadly used and affordable. Um, uh, Tax benefits come in uh, as a very appropriate solution if you think of the um, household as an employer versus a company as an employer. The company uh, uh, pays um, uh, from the uh, um, uh, top line basically and doesn't uh, he can make a deduct cost etc. Um, so the household has already paid taxes on their salary and then they have to pay someone who also will then. Um, uh, have to be taxed, so um, there's really a, a way through tax incentive to uh, like strike the right balance. And uh, um, uh, if you think about certain areas um, in in society that might be quite important for the future, such as um, like services for um, people to take care of their children, help at home when we want more uh, uh, women being able to work and people to stay longer at home at, in an aging society, we will require more of these services. And you can like, really also tell from these kind of policy uh, initiatives how a country thinks in general about um, like these kind of services, who has access to it. In France, for example, with a 50% tax benefit, childcare um, uh, or nanny services um, are available to a much broader range of people um, than in the Netherlands. What, like You know yourself best about the incredible childcare costs that you have in, in the Netherlands, right? Yeah. So um, that's very different in, in France. Um, birth rate in the Netherlands is like 50% higher than in Germany. Um, so there might be um, a correlation on like stress of life, um, even though like we are doing economically fine. But um, uh, those are things to to talk about. So, like, can we do something to like enable um, uh, private households as employers to like compete in in terms of wages, and on the other hand, provide like favorable access and setting the right incentives for service providers to work in the legal market and not in the shadow economy. Yeah. Okay. I think that uh, <coughs> we talked about um, uh, the status of the of the uh, workers for the platform uh, about okay how can we uh, uh, make the landscape more um, uh, efficient but also more attractive uh, for for households mm -hmm. to also pay uh, a better salary mm -hmm. and uh, better conditions. So also. So that would also be better for the workers. Yeah. Uh, another discussion in platform land is also about the, 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 the central power of platforms. Yeah. Um, platforms, they all want to have, or all, many of them want to have a more monopoly position in the country because it, that's also uh, uh, practical, the, the easiest way to, to operate. Mm -hmm. um, what's your, your idea about that? So I think um, marketplaces are um, dependent on a certain volume to have liquidity. Right, so there is an advantage of larger players, like both for the player itself because of the size of the business, but also for everyone involved. So that's why you could have a tendency towards that. Um, so I think in general, you need to observe the power that platforms have, whether that's that classic 
monopoly theory. Yeah, then they we have, uh, especially in Germany, pretty uh, strict rules. And you have these discussions today with Google, um, uh, with, with Facebook, um, etc. already. So um, I think the example of Uber, like, yes, on the one hand being super, super huge, super aggressive, but it's not that they don't have competition. Like they have competition from the incumbent businesses, the taxis, that in some areas now are much better than they were 10 years before, right? So you have local taxi companies who have, or taxi associations with their own app now, right? So they come there, you, like, you basically um, kind of uh, follow the ideal scenario that the, like, there's, you have a disruptor that makes everyone have to invent, uh, reinvent themselves, and like, that creates competition thereafter. Um, at the same time, you have, like, companies such as Lyft, for example. Like in our case, if you look at, like we, like I'm happy to discuss the same question in 10 years again, but um, if you compare like us to the, to the, to the black market or the alternatives, um, I don't see that immediate risk, but I see it is a, it's a, it's, there's, it's right to be concerned about this issue in general. And I think in most cases you have natural tendencies that like the incumbent becomes uh, fat and IBM, right? So uh, I think it was the 26th or something consecutive quarter at a loss, right? So who would have thought? Um, uh, and they will now uh, also um, like uh, be their pressure to reinvent themselves. And this is something that I think will always go on. Um, like uh, and, 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 and maybe also, I think, uh, because uh, right now we are judging many developments uh, on what they are right now yeah. and not on what they could be potentially in the future. Yeah. Maybe just some thought that pops up is because now I see many platforms want to be the first big one in a country and it's really hard then to, 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 uh, 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 to be second uh, to enter a country so you can uh, buy a company or you can spend a lot of money but many times it's not yeah, financially interesting to do that. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm also involved with some uh, platform co-op researchers where mm -hmm. the uh, workers there also are owning in a co cooperative way yeah. uh, the, uh, the, uh, the platform. So also the government and ownership also partly with the, uh, with the, uh, with the people who put value in the platform. So maybe also for helping in, in future that you can say, okay, we're now start growing by really entering the countries ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this will take maybe two or three years and then the, the, the whole market will be uh, uh, divided in, in different big parties. And, then, and, and maybe then you can start with facilitating smaller uh, uh, cleaning cooperatives mm -hmm. uh, with your uh, software uh, and also with your uh, back office mm -hmm. uh, to be an interesting uh, uh, alternative to, uh, to, to the existing players. Just some, some free advice or thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the cooperative model is super interesting, uh, like especially in technology when you have no cost of low, low cost of assets very often. Um, uh, or low cost of transferability of the, the assets. Um, but uh, again, you have the traditional issues with cooperative ownership, where responsibility and participation, input, output, um, uh, you don't really have a principal agent uh, um, uh, relationship here. Um, so uh, that comes with it particular mm -hmm. problems. I think there are areas where this has been solved super greatly. Think of like open source projects that uh, that are working or flourishing. Um, uh, think of like in part maybe cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. what is going on there or what will go on there. So I think technology is at a point where this is a realistic um, uh, um, uh, scenario in some areas. Um, so I think the larger those cooperatives um, uh, get the more difficult uh, it probably is because you very often lose that initial drive of idealism yeah. um, and this is a bit of a like an at some point it becomes the system become a, it creates an adverse selection of the people joining the system yeah I think the same like Lenas we've got Rabobank the biggest cooperative yeah. bank yeah. but I think only the marketing department knows that they're a, 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 a cooperative yes. so and I also believe that we need to find a kind of a best of both world model uh, because we need uh, entrepreneurial spirit uh, more social spirit I think we make, need to make a, a combination. Yeah. Um, 
And you say, okay, uh, uh, when we would talk in, in 10 years, diff the, uh, the discussion would be different. Uh, let's say we talk about, again in five years. What do you, uh, uh, where is Helpling then? So, in your most ideal situation, of course. So for us, we are at a very interesting stage of um, adding additional services and uh, trying out the inclusion of products in the service offerings, where like we become from like a one vertical player, a platform for the ecosystem. So I just want as many people as possible um, uh, uh, in five years from now to have their helping app in their pockets uh, to either like run their service provider business right, or manage their entire household through that one stop solution. And um, I think that's a very exciting uh, um, mission that we are on here. And um, uh, we think we can then discuss uh, where we stand uh, in five years. Okay, then I will talk to you in five years. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank and you. And you're staying in Amsterdam and uh, see you in five years. I look forward to that. Thank you. <laughs>